Hey peeps, it's Triple L, and today I'm here to talk to you about Pokemon. I mean, come on, you saw the thumbnail, you see the title, you know what it's about. But the thumbnail is probably what's got you wondering. Who is that guy and why does him and Game Freak make Charmander? Well, actually, it's a really funny story, and thankfully for you, I'm going to tell you. So, but no, actually, all arrogance aside, yeah, no, this is some a video I've really wanted to do for a while, peeps. So just sit back, relax, it's only going to be a few minutes, and maybe you'll learn something. Or maybe you already know this. Actually, if you're a diehard Pokemon fan, you might have a good idea of what I'm about to talk about. But anyway, let's get into this. Let's start with the end result, Charmander. This cool little guy. One of the favorite starters. You know, people really love him. He evolves into a monster of a beast. He's the hot, the flammable, and he's just so nice to look at. Eh, actually, no. He's pretty simple of a design. In terms of fire starters, he's not my favorite. But that's not what this video is here for. Let's actually talk about Charmander. So... This whole video is relying on one thing, and I need you people to agree with it. It's very simple. Charmander and Salamander. Right? We, we, see, the, we see the similarities there in the names, right? Yeah? Okay, we, we could say that Charmander is probably the name came for, from Salamander and Char. Right? We could, we could agree that, right? Because really this is what the whole thing is relying upon. It's this link first. Okay, actually, man, I don't know why I'm sounding so arrogant. Anyway, no, like, chances are, this is the connection. This is the naming origin. It's a salamander. But the actual real question here is, why salamander? So, peeps, you might already be getting ahead of me if you know the general gist of what salamander represents in certain schools of spiritual thought. That being that, salamander is usually the name of one of the four elementals. The four elements being fire, water, wind, and earth, right? So, already, this is pretty occult stuff. And if you didn't know about Salamander and it being associated with the element of fire, well, now you know. So already we have Salamander and we have its association to fire. That's cool. But that's not actually what the video is here about. It's more about asking why. Why is Salamander associated to fire? And it's actually pretty simple. It's all because of this guy. Look at him. He looks like he's seen stuff. But no, in all seriousness, it's because of this guy. His name is Paracelsus. He is a physician, a botanist, a master of the empirical arts. He is, I think, what they called the founder of toxicology. Like, this guy pioneered the use of minerals in medicine. So he's a pretty big deal, and he's a pretty big influence for the whole field of medicine. But what's really cool about him is that this guy was also an alchemist. And actually, the system of fire, wind, earth, and water, he was the one that gave the names to the elementals, or he's the one that pretty much established the names of the elementals that everyone else used. And those were Gnome, Undyne, Sylph, and Salamander. So this is the guy, he's pretty responsible for why Charmander got his name. It's because he established that a Salamander was related to fire. But the story of why he would come to the conclusion of why a Salamander had to represent fire, it's actually pretty interesting too. And I might be wrong on this because it's actually really hard to research this particular aspect because it's regarding some myths or some stories, and I'm not exactly sure which one came when. Salamanders have always had an occult kind of significance, but what I'm going to talk about now is a story regarding salamanders in medieval times. So, peeps, if you were a farmer out in the boonies, probably you're growing potatoes, you'd have a, maybe, every now and again, you'd want to burn a log. I don't know, because you need to get rid of it for some reason, or maybe you need to offer it to some pagan god. Anyway, you would go and you would burn that log, and out of that log, out of the fire, something would come out darting at you. It'd be on fire. It'd be scary. It's small, but, but for some reason, it's just really freaking you out. And you, you, you think, oh my god, the fire's alive. But no, actually, what that was was a salamander. So what would happen is that salamanders were occasionally under the logs that people would burn in the olden days. And then when the fire caught, and you know, the salamanders, obviously, right? Preservation of life, they get scared. And they would run out of the fire. And so they'd be kind of on fire. But because of the way it looked, people got really freaked out, I think. They ended up just saying salamanders are born from flame. And that's pretty much the story of how Salamander got his name. Well, actually, I'm just this one's actually really assuming. I assume that Paracelsus was aware of the general myths and folklore around salamanders since he was an occultist. He probably would have been studied up on that thing. He would have been aware of the myths. And then he just associated the name Salamander to the elemental of fire. And then, because of that, we get Charmander who is associated to the elemental fire, since he's a fire type, he gets the name of Salamander, and for extra nice coolness, he gets Char, which you could say is like coming from charcoal, 
which is a burnt log, which is what initially caused the whole salamander myth, burning logs. See, isn't that cool, peeps? So really, peeps, this video was just to give you a bit of insight into who pretty much gave Charmander his name or whose influence really came into play when they were naming Charmander. I just think it's a really neat little thing and, you know, it's nice to know a little trivia. Heck, heck, use it at a dinner party or something. I don't know. Do with it what you will. Anyway, peeps, let me know what you thought about this video. And uh, if you like this video, please let me know because then I can make more of it because I know people like it. Or if you want me to change my approach in any which way, uh, let me know. And if you did enjoy the video that much, consider subscribing. You know, every little subscriber helps or every little comment helps and it really does make a difference. And if by some chance you want more Pokemon related content, well good for you, I make some of that. So here's some links. This video is also about alchemy, it's covering the newest Firestarter. I highly recommend it. Or if you haven't seen another video about Paul Pleo and his design in general, I highly recommend that one too. That one's actually doing pretty well on this channel. But anyway peeps, till next time, thanks so much for watching in all honesty, you guys are awesome. Have a good day.